so welcome everyone to another fresh uh, episode of Fresh Air. And so we have our normal team and we have another member to our team of Fresh Air. So just wanted to introduce the newest member of the team, Dr. Sharada Nagati, who'll be joining us and will um, be helping to give her expertise to some challenging cases. And so once again, uh, we're gonna have some amazing cases from Dr. Irene Sinsano, who's gonna present some um, cases on cryobiopsy, which um, being in Canada in the frozen tundra right now, it feels very fitting. So take it away, Irene. Interstitial lung tumor. I hope you have put your children in bed because this is a stuff for runners. And <laughs> I'm going to, to show you some cases and I I I, read the, I plan to read the history and you decide who wants to to talk about the case first. Is that okay? Sounds great. Yeah, yeah perfect. So let's go with the first case with the first first case. It's a 40-year-old man who is a non-smoker who has no re relevant medical history. He takes no drugs, he has no expositions. And after an upper airway infection, he starts with progressive dyspnea. So the CT says um, OP, and he is he is treated with corticosteroids with improvement. Uh, after three months of treatment, he they they take out the the corticosteroids and uh, he has a relapse. Who wants to talk about the cryo-epsy? Any volunteers, guys? Otherwise, I, I can do it. So I, I guess, can take. Yeah. Go for it, Raga. Go for it, yeah. Raga. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Yeah. I see very good pieces of uh, biopsy. A uh, big piece of cartilage, though. Uh, it takes up most of the space in the cryo-biopsy. So obviously, that area is... Uh, um, you can't interpret, um, but otherwise I can see um, good amounts of all related lung parenchyma, but most of the stuff looks like tumor, neoplastic lesion. Um, no, wait, Raghav, this is ILD, so you can't make any other diagnosis except uh, <laughs> <ILD>. <laughs> I don't know. And the CT yes, said OP, so you have to you have to correlate with the CT and make it OP. Remember, <laughs> I should I should make it OP. Uh, but I don't see I don't see any fibromyxer flux of uh, organizing pneumonia, oh. even though the CT says OP. Um, does the CT said OP? That means it's ground glass opacities or consolidation. That's what it means. Consolidation. It, the, I think I think they they said consolidation, but the the diagnosis was OP. I think okay. this, uh, easiest cases are for the braids that stand. So this is a. A very easy case for for pathologists, but the patient yeah. has, hasn't been diagnosed for for months. It Means I don't see a... any yeah any features of OP here. Obviously, I'm disagreeing with the radiologist. I don't know how far that's going to go well, but at this point of time, all I see is papillary structures, um, the tumor cells uh, uh, exhibiting. Is this the is this the insertion or maybe it could be some some yeah, I think it is the interstitial. No, well, I don't know. Maybe some fibroblasts here, but but yeah. we are not sure if I if mean it's exactly this. I feel that there's some fibroblastic proliferation in between those tumor cells. Um, again, if it is interstitial, which is expanded, usually I try to look for any lining, alveolar, pneumocytes, or something like that. Here, I'm I'm having difficulty differentiating. Obviously, uh, everything looks tumor cells to me um, because there's too many tumor cells lining and everything, uh, but they're clearly forming papillary structures. So I'm inclined towards thinking that it's a uh, adenocarcinoma, um, this, whatever I'm seeing, um, but this, can it be? This is what it is. I think um, I, in this era of non-doing biopsies in ILD, I wanted to show this example because not everything that looks like OP, it's OP uh, yes. in, in the CT. I mean, um, I, I'm not saying that, I, I'm, I don't know. I don't know what you think if they had to, because I, I know OP is so frequent that maybe you don't have to biopsy every, every person. 
but obviously if something goes doesn't go as as it should you should you should yes in in fact irene i think this is a common reason to biopsy op is because it doesn't resolve you know so somebody has an infiltrate and it doesn't resolve i think the reason that they biopsy most of the time is to exclude something like this you know so they're suspecting op but they want to make sure it's not malignancy and most of the time it's not malignancy but a case like this actually proves that they should be biopsying cases that don't resolve and are are on the borderline between a, you know, uh, OP type picture and a and a adenocarcinoma type picture. The other thing I'd like to say is that even uh, it even shows how nice pathologists are. Look what Raghav did. Even though this is absolutely clear cut <laughs> adenocarcinoma, he still tried to see could there be some OP there. Is there some way that the radiologist is right? You know, I think we do that a lot as pathologists. Somehow we try to make make nice with the radiologist, even when it is clear that the, that it's wrong. It, it's just no, pathologists are nice people. Not nice, but I always think that that somebody has has thought that for a reason, and and I I want to to be sure that that it that they it's that if they are right or not to to say it. I mean to be sure that because. It, it's a doctor that has thought that yes. there was something. So I That's want to. Look for any it. thoughts, uh, Sharda, Matt? Any thoughts about this case? Um, I was just thinking, like uh, um, the adjacent lung parenchyma, can it not show OP? I mean, it's not in this case generally. Like, um, I know it's like it's uh, like um, um, uh, malignancy case should not be made when there is acute lung injury changes. But again, but. I'm just thinking, since the radiologist is calling it OP, can there be a possibility of OP still? Yes, of course. I, I think that the, the fact that the radiologist made OP doesn't change my mind at all about the pathology of this case. Yeah, of so course. It could yeah. be OP somewhere else. It could be OP in the background of this. In fact, what Irene was showing is the fibroblasts in the back. Maybe there is some OP there. But mm -hmm. I feel that the fact that this is adenocarcinoma is the more important thing. Exactly. Yeah, like yeah. she's circling it now. That could be some OP in the back, but I think that's irrelevant. You know, I think what what's more important is that there is adenocarcinoma here, um, yeah. and we sh we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't underplay that just because there there might be OP along with it, or you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree as well. And maybe maybe the history that I think they got some steroids. Maybe there was a more predominant OP picture in the beginning, and then that part resolved. And now what we're looking at is the thing that got worse was the cancer that obviously didn't respond to the steroids. Yes. And of course, there's also another possibility, Sharda, is that there is no OP. Right? That, you know, maybe this is a desmoplastic stroma. stroma and that just... is just uh, that adenocarcinoma sometimes mimics OP, you know, when yeah. it becomes very confluent like this. Mm. Yeah. We, we, yeah, so, yeah. Sometimes... Go for it. Go... Oh, fact... I was just going to say the when people that... call this... Sorry, Sorry? Irene, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask, would people call this micropapillary or papillary? I, I know people often don't call oh. that on biopsy, but... Uh, Can we see me, it higher, uh, Irene? Like a little bit higher, Mac? To me, I think there's some micropapillary areas. Yeah, there. me too. Yeah. Papillary here because we have vessels. Or... Yes. Micropapillary but... here. Yeah. I think I would describe both. The... I think that, oh, sorry, that um, here, as you see a stroma with vessels and uh, the malignant cells covering it, it's a papilli. Pap pap yes. And these that are little flowers without stroma are the micro papilli. Yes. Can I ask you all guys a question, a multiple choice question? I'll start <laughs> with you, Irene, since you're talking, okay? So, sorry, here, here. Yes. <laughs> do you see the opposite? <laughs> It's a Nassini. <laughs> oh, that's a Nassini? Let me ask you the question, Irene. So my question is, uh, in pattern recognition, you know, the micropapillary, papillary, acinar, lepidic, is the reproducibility between pathologists good, bad, or intermediate? Depends on pattern. I, Irene, what would you say? Good, bad, or, or intermediate? The reproducibility between pathologists. I, I struggle to to see the patterns, so I my impression is that it's bad. Bad, Matt. What do you think? I would say super bad. Super bad. <laughs> yeah. uh, Raghav, 
<laughs> I agree with Matt that it's super duper bad. Super <laughs> Sharda, what do you think? How is the reproducibility between I, pathologists for? I for feel packing? it's um, okay, intermediate. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody thinks it's good, right? So nobody thinks that if you show two different pathologists the same case, they will give exactly the same view on every case of adenocarcinoma, no. right? For pattern recognition. I think the papillary and the micropapillary, I think uh, we are good. Uh, solid also, we are good. But when it becomes acinar and lepidic, I don't know what's lepidic for your taste and what is lepidic for <laughs> my taste. And also depends on the day also. Mondays, the lepidic is different. Tuesday, it becomes different. <laughs> Collapse. I, I won't argue with a pathologist because of patterns. I think. Yes. Yeah, me neither. Me, me. Uh, even I find, uh, I feel the same, that there's a lot of confusion between lepidic and acinar pattern. Um, what one says is lepidic, maybe somebody sells, says it as acinar. So, Correct. And everybody and thinks they are right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Great case, Irene. I, great case. Also, just I'm wanted to add one more point. One more point about the organizing pneumonia, especially in the needle core biopsies. Uh, when they are taking a core biopsy, uh, generally, sometimes they only get the organizing pneumonia part, which is at the periphery, not the tumor. So if the patient has got a big lesion on imaging, uh, we generally try to make it a point that just seeing organizing pneumonia, no tumor, and if you're still suspicious, then uh, probably you have to resample and reassess the situation, something like that. Raghav, has that happened in practice to you? Like the first biopsy was OP only and the second biopsy is all tumor? Um, I have not keeping track of it, uh, like the same case, like you mentioned first, but we, we do have seen some cases like that where we see organizing pneumonia in one fragment, then tumor in another fragment, maybe at the edge of the piece, you have some tumor. Yeah, but of the, the patient same biopsy, correct? Of the same, same biopsy, biopsy. Yeah, correct. But and then patient has a big mass sitting there. Um, so we, we, we have seen that uh, every now and then. It's not very common. Uh, we do think we have some expert people, interventional people that they always get try to get tissue and we try to save it for molecular testing. Don't do all the stains possible <laughs> and, and exhaust the tissue. Yeah. Um, Could the it, so do you also do that with granulomas, um, Raghav? Let's say you have a necrotizing granuloma in a biopsy, would you say, well, this is a necrotizing granuloma, but be careful, there might be tumor nearby, or do, or do you don't? You don't <laughs> no, do no, no, we, only for OP. We, oh, only for OP. <laughs> That's okay. an interesting question, and it looks like a trap, but uh, we will take it. <laughs> yeah, because what I'm trying to imply here is that I think that implies that you're saying that necrotizing granuloma is a more specific diagnosis that almost implies that there's nothing else going on. That is the main lesion. Whereas OP not, is not necessarily the main lesion and could be at the periphery of a tumor. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah, only if I all only if all the dots do not match or um, become a line, uh, yeah. then otherwise like it could still be OP can explain a mass lesion and everything, yes. But yeah. great point. <laughs> yeah. Guys, any any thoughts? Uh, other people? Irene, Matt, um, Sharda? I just think it's important to correlate with the radiology, right? And so if, if it's like a solid mass lesion, that's pretty unlikely to be OP, right? And and I, I agree with Raga. If I, in that scenario, I definitely put a comment. But if it's like bilateral ground glass lesions that the radiology is favoring OP, then then I just, I don't, I don't put in any comment because it fits. All right. So Great often case. to see it's so often to see OP next to things. Not not that often. Often to see granulomas next to other things. Though I have yeah. seen it. Yes, I have also seen. To, to I have see also it. seen granuloma uh, next to tumor. Yeah. So it. I mean, you but, can always say that the, you know you never trust a benign diagnosis because there can always be a malignant diagnosis next to it. But I think the the frequency of that is actually very very low in in real life. That when you get a like when you get a benign diagnosis, most of the time it is that benign diagnosis is, is the lesion. It's it's very uncommon to have it that it's missed the the tumor and it's something else. But it happens. I I'll agree that rarely it it does happen sometimes. The something that made this the they think this patient had not a neoplasm 
also was that he was a non-smoker. This uh, talk against tumor. I, I we see more times the biopsies of patients that are uh, smokers because they they are more suspicious if there is a smoking history that the, that more benign that benign looking lesions could be malignant. But in this case, it wasn't. Obviously, we did NGS. Obviously, it had uh, something and. Yeah. And so, but I, but I'm, we, I'm talking. We are talking a lot about tumors in this uh, ILD <laughs> session. <laughs> Irene, one last question: Is was this a cryobiopsy, or no? Yes, it, it was. was a, so you guys do cryobiopsy even for for tumor? Or oh wait, this was suspected ILD. So I, I understand. Okay, got it. Mm, no, but but we do. We for do for tumors. Uh, yeah, even we do cryobiopsies for tumors. Wow! Wow! Mm. Interesting. And um, if they are peripheral, the pulmonologist here does radial epis. Okay. And a bit peripheral uh, lesion. Yeah. You, you, we get big pieces by doing cryobiopsies. Yes, this is uh, an awesome biopsy. Oh, sorry. 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 I wanted to show you how much. It's like seven, wow. 7.5 millimeters. So wow. this, uh, this gives you more tissue. Yes. Yes, for sure. I've seen some people, uh, we, we get good DNA and RNA from this, and I've seen no artifact of, of, of this freezing. And we also, um, we also culture, culture the, the, the cryobiopsis, because I've heard some people saying, uh, you cannot culture cryobiopsis mm. or you cannot, but we, we get positive culture from this and we get DNA and RNA, so. Mm. For big, getting big pieces of pieces, cryobiopsies are awesome.